Hello everybody, welcome to Cause and Effect, a show about Vitus. This is the second part of uh, the season premiere of the fourth, uh, fourth season. And as always, if you have missed the first part, you should go, go back and have a look at it, if you want to. But uh, if you're only here for the part about the deck list, then you have gotten to the, the right part. So, uh, moving on, we are going to talk about the deck list now. Uh, the winner, Randall Rudstam of uh, Roppicon, uh, his decklist. Uh, Maestro, Adam, should Yeah. Yeah. So, so why did you choose this deck, Randall? Oh, um, I was I was thinking about several decks um, to play, and uh, one of them was actually a uh, Luton Mada vote deck that uh, basically Ma Michael played, but that kind of deterred me from playing it, because I knew that if I would meet him, it would be disastrous for us. But uh, it's playing Bleed with Azure Tablets is quite strong, and I had played the deck uh, in a previous tournament, and I played it in a quite a few uh, Swedish casual games, and so I was quite familiar with the deck. So I was, it was one of the decks I was most familiar with at the time. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I was playing it. Um, and how did you, where did you get it, the idea from? Well, uh, the idea originated uh, basically from Stefan Carlson in uh, Gothenburg. For uh, the, the author, author of, of uh, Lord of the Clog blog. Yeah, author of Lord of the Clog blog, and uh, he uh, played it, and then Alexander Boskman who quite much enjoys playing high cap bleed decks. He's notorious for playing Civil in different versions. Uh, took the deck and uh, optimized it even more and played it and won a tournament with it in Stockholm. And then I decided that I wanted to play it. So Can I... You just show us a war ghoul, Adam. Perhaps. Or, okay. I, I took the deck to the US and played it there, having uh, quite fun with it. And then yeah. I... Did you tell yourself when seeing Bosman win with it, I want to win as well. Was that I, every time Bosman wins, I tell myself I want to win as well, because he's such yeah. an awesome guy. Okay, so uh, so you had uh, you had Bos uh, Boskman's deck for uh, for a blueprint. And yes. uh, Do we have that deck? Uh, yeah. Yes, we do. Okay. You can check that out first, and then see what you did. So here we have uh, Bosman's deck. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, uh, Isaac, could you run us through the deck? Yes. So basically, you use Hootsu Porchly and preferably Inner Circles, but there's some other guys here, Esau and Nefertiti, the, the uniting factor being Obfuscate and Plus Bleed, uh, preferably Dominate Orsbeck's Presence as well. Uh, you, you, you combine them after your gut, more or less. Um, but in Postman's version, you use presence really heavily to bleed, so entrancement and int intimidation, uh, and then you use conditioning as modifiers and foreshadowing destruction. So you go for a low blood uh, bleed module to be able to be lane for more uh, without having such a uh, big impact on your late game, blood-wise. Uh, so, what kind of changes uh, you saw this deck list, and then you saw what kind of changes did you do to adapt to the Ropicon meta? I did quite a few changes. Uh, the biggest one was that I cut down on the master package because I was thinking that there was going to be a lot of block and rush combat, so I wanted to be able to handle that block without master clogging. So I I removed quite a bit of monsters and added quite a bit of stealth, yeah. and then I added some card generally good cards like uh, mind rape and banishment. And uh, you can see my exact changes in the blog that we run from Stockholm, which is Stockholm Jihad at dot blogspot dot sc. Yeah, uh, I would say that the most notable thing you did was removing liquidation altogether. Yes. So that's where the biggest drop in, in monsters come from. So going yes. from Postman's original deck with five liquidations going to zero. 
How yes. did you uh, uh, feel that affected your card flow when playing the deck? It affected in a way that I had always I had a harder time bringing out the third minion because you quite often get out two minions and then you you get stuck there. It's hard to get out a uh, third minion because you don't have the the pool room to do it because you play you play crypt acceleration and villain to bounce up and down but you you kind of get quite low yeah. and that was that was quite notable but it, it worked out anyway so uh, so hearing this I'm thinking that uh, uh, seeing how you you get a better uh, larger amount of minion cards and fewer minions it seems like uh, the two minions you get uh, will be stronger, but Bosman's deck will be uh, stronger when it gets three minions. So in a way, you're kind of uh, a bit stronger more early, mm. and yes. less strong later on. Is that That's correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, I a good point. It is a very good point. I could I agree with the uh, assessment, but as I said before, I was thinking that would be quite a lot of block and yeah. some some combat. So I was. I was less afraid of the uh, heavy pool damaging decks, so I was thinking I still had the the room to bring out a uh, third minion once in a while because I w was maybe not looking to meet heavy bleed decks, for example. Did you did you uh, manage to to yeah. take out the third minion in several of the games? Not in the finals, <coughs> but in. Uh, in two of the preliminaries. Is that the other question? Uh, no, I just as I'm speculating, speculating a bit here. So you could go for this, essentially, like shrugging is like, what the hell? I just have the two minions and be satisfied with that. And if I'm lucky or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, I can have three minions. But you could, I'm just speculating. Uh, go go for more ankle cog and metro undergrounds. Go two, three cogs and one one or two extra meter underground and try to because having the cog on Erica for instance essentially is an additional uh, inner circle so that's like the third minion so you could go more for a, a, a safe anchor cog there's never, never a safe anchor cog but mm. you see my point? I, I just see your point absolutely here. I well see your point absolutely but then again I mean Erika has a big target in her forehead to begin with her, yeah. her having ankle cold gives makes the target twice as big. I don't know. It's uh, it's a good speculation. Well, but then, yeah. you're still gonna dilute your deck with the extra <coughs> metros and the extra ankle cogs. Uh, yeah. And you're still gonna get kind of the same effect with liquidation. And uh, yeah. So yeah, they will end up being the same amount of cords. Yeah. More or less. Uh, but something that's quite interesting, uh, if you're talking about the amount of stealth and the amount of minions. Uh, is that if you're facing heavy block, like Randall was uh, expecting, uh, it's quite likely that you're not gonna be able to take more than one action each turn anyway, since it costs so many stealth cards to take actions, and you don't want to get blocked. Uh, you're still gonna, you know, like, in a lot of heavy block situations, you're just gonna take one action anyway. Uh, and then it's better to have more stealth cards so you can take that action every single turn and even and once in a while take two actions each turn even if you're facing a really blockish prey. Is it not right? Like, yeah, yeah, I agree. So then the third minion isn't as interesting because you won't have the stealth for that third minion anyway. Mm. You simply don't have enough stealth in the deck. It's really interesting to just see, like, taking your five or six liquidations and cutting them essentially means one less minion. Yes, it's very interesting that it's so obvious because those situations where you describe where you have a lot, not as much pressure, if you play a more ordinary master module in your deck, you probably end up with four minions in those cases, yeah. and three minions in the cases where you are have a have more pressure on yourself. I I think. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. so that it's basically one minion. All those. So, are you saying you don't agree with the choices that Randall made, exactly? Uh, considering uh, fearing a lot of uh, uh, block, it makes sense, because then you can spend more stealth cards per bleed, but if I were to build a deck and go play it, I'd probably prefer doing the liquidation thing to get but that extra third minions, minion. You have an easier time with rushes, 
since losing one minion isn't as big a deal if you have three of them. Yeah. So I would say that uh, uh, this uh, deck list is well adapted to heavy block and maybe less adapted to rush. Okay. So do you do you agree with the with the choices that uh, Randall made? Of course, they were tur they turned out to be good. But do, would you make the same uh, adjustments on them? I think they're quite interesting. I like removing liquidation. I think that's quite smart, uh, especially since Hutz's master face action is kind of expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Cybel's master face action or Anne's uh, master face action. So, uh, in light of that, it's it seems really intelligent. And uh, if you're uh, with the line of thought that I just presented, uh, if you're uh, gonna be more weak against rushes, you can just add extra Unleashed Fury and extra obedience. Yeah, and you'll be more uh, safe against that as well. So Did you add? You added? You have four obedience in the deck, uh, and the Alex's original had three, so yeah, it's a big friend was made was huge. Also, I added uh, force of personality for combat ends and un anti imbued. <laughs> yeah, so you have a lot. You have a uh, quite a lot of combat defense as well. Yeah, say. well, a reasonable amount at least. Reasonable amount. So, what was like? Uh, what's the greatest strength then of the deck? Would you say? That I would say the greatest strength is that you can, you will at least speed up the tables because it's a big tournament. And uh, as Isaac says, and uh, I experienced last year is that there's quite a few uh, players that only play once each year, and it's quite important that somebody has to die because you need to be able to and then you can bleed and you I mean if you bleed your grand prey or your grand predator or whatever that's pool, less pool on the table because you don't have the time to sit around so I wanted to play quite fast aggressive deck. Another thing that should be mentioned about the Ropicon tournament is we we'll to touch upon the subject but it starts at 6.30 or something like that in the evening and there's no break at all for food and stuff and on the convention area, there's a uh, a bar open, <laughs> basically the same hours as the tournament. So as the night goes on, people get more tired, and uh, maybe more uh, emotional because they haven't eaten for a long time, and some drink beer. So having uh, that in the back of your your head, you have to have be able to act fast, oust fast, uh, do all that in few fewer amount of s of, of rounds of playing. So if you can ma make the games end by turn 9 or 10, then you're probably safe for time. But if you have decks that are 11 or 12, which can make it before time, but then you need a sober uh, <laughs> uh, a, a sober tournament, a tournament that's well-rested, a tournament that's have eaten and it's not emotional, because some people can react very wrong if you tar start to stress yeah. them. Like, you need to play faster, you need to play faster. If they're a bit drunk or haven't eaten, blah, blah, blah. And so it also becomes a problem with uh, the language barrier. You might come across as rude uh, uh, when, uh, like, talking English to someone that. Uh, well, when you're, I'm talking English as my second language, and someone else has English as a second language, you might come across as rude, and then you might uh, tip tick people off. Yeah. Like, uh, with uh, because uh, everyone is tired and there's misunderstandings and stuff. Uh, what do you this like about the the, the strengths of the deck, Adam? The strengths. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think uh, I agree more or less. That was what I was thinking when you asked Randy the question. Uh, it gets this um, because it's like a, a non unstoppable force kind of stealth bleed deck. You s bring up a huge cap vampire that bleeds for a lot with lots of stealth every single turn, and this uh, uh, this iteration of the deck uh, takes that to a bit of an extreme. It starts really early, and you have. Uh, lots of uh, stealth and bleed cards, so you uh, start uh, really powerful bleeds really, really quickly, and that seems really good. Yeah. Also, that's quite interesting. Uh, connecting what Randy and Isaac said is that, uh, uh, like Randy said, he chose this deck because he was used to it and felt comfortable with it, and that's really important when playing a tournament that's this late in the night, yeah. because you need to be able to make uh, fast decisions yourself as well and then it's really important to be comfortable to deck so you can play uh, fast even if you're tired yeah. okay so so weaknesses Randa, did you experience any weaknesses with the deck well actually um, 
two out of the two of the uh, three preliminaries, I met a lot more ally decks than I thought. And uh, obedience doesn't work against allies. And I had in two of the games I met imbutes. Uh, of course, I have the the entrancements, but against imbutes, entrancements aren't that good. Uh, and I met a wargle deck, so that that was I was uh, it was quite. Uh, it was a balanced act, one can say. Yeah, but the thing you say about ally deck, like this in this particular iteration of the deck is not isn't that reliable against allies because you have only have no. the two entrancements and you have yes. no liquidations. So exactly. if, if worst comes to worst, those two could be in the bottom half. Then you could have Yes. Would but have to wait like three four three quarters of a game to get them. Worst comes to worst. Yeah. If push I mean, comes to shove. If yes, it if sh the fan. I was just going for that. Oh! <laughs> that was a smirk situation. So, that was, that was uh, a weakness. I did not expect to see that much allies as I did, but yeah. uh, it worked out quite well. Anyway, and yeah, the, the language was a little barrier. One of the games, the game with Urshulgi, I, uh, th three other players that seemed to be playing once a year, uh, start speaking to each other in Finnish, and uh, I just ignored them because I, if I would have interacted with them, they would probably taken more time, and that wasn't an option. Yeah. Yeah. I um, think another uh, flaw uh, with this compared, and this is only uh, basically compared to girls, is that you don't have as much bleed defense. Yeah, uh, and and especially, especially considering that you opted out liquidation, you only end up with the Two bounces? And that's no, four bounces. Ah, yeah, you four. have the murmur of the false will as well. So when they stick, they're kind of reliable, but you c could be unlucky. Anyways, you have the four bounces. Four bounces and 72 cards and no liquidations. Uh, you could, if your first few t turns, you could only rely on getting one of them. And that's very ballsy to play that little, little uh, bleed defense. So I mean, if you if you get a, your first predator is a uh, the stealth bleed, you would get kind of effed in the A. Yes, okay. yeah. but you would you would be that anyway, in most cases. Yeah, a lot. It's a calculated risk, and that makes me kind of like it because it paid off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If Rand has been to this tournament before and he chooses to play uh, or change the deck to make it. Uh, uh, good against uh, low bleed better, and it pays off. That's like a really good choice in my opinion. It yeah. seems it's uh, intelligent meta gaming, and it like in this situation it obviously paid off as well. Yeah. So well, as long as you know you. what you're doing, I think that's kind of uh, optimizing is great. Okay, yeah. someone says that I'm going to sneak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I was thinking about is that this is maybe the easy way. To just okay. like, oh, there's four bounces and that's not a lot. But uh, considering you have two eyes of Argus and Obedience, that is tap lead defense. When people yes. lead for with tap and a lot of... This like is correct. For six with no stealth, you can use Obedience to defend against that. And, and you should not... One mind rape and one banishment that you can use backwards to stall a minion for a turn. Or best case scenario, you borrow that guy for... One little bleed for six. Yes. So, but also don't forget, Unleash Hell's Fury is also bleed defense. Yeah. 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 And uh, I suppose maybe I should already said that, but uh, that's in shift as well. Yeah. So, uh, how would you say how key was? Um, wait a minute. What's it called? Uh, brain fart. Um, action modifier. Ankle cog. Ankle cog in your gaming? Uh, it was very key in the finals. Uh, it was less key in uh, the preliminaries. So you wouldn't consider double it up? Yes, of course. I mean, it's it's not a bad choice to do. It's not a bad choice to double up Ankle Cog playing maybe another Metro Underground. The thing is that you don't you don't play natural multi-act. Yeah. So the combo needs to be those two cards and it's harder to make it work as well if you don't play liquidation. You have uh, yes. less options with your library and which cards you get in your deck. Yes. Okay, so are there any like, other key elements of the deck that you 
felt worked good for your favor? Well, naturally, I gaining two pool for Shulgi because in uh, Alexander's uh, original, he didn't play Shulgi; he played two Etrus instead. Etrus is an inner circle with uh, another plus bleed and more wall specs, but uh, diversifying the crypt, I, I enjoy in diversifying, diversifying crypts. It's very nice to do. What do you feel about the, the crypt, Isaac? Uh, I kind of agree with the crypt. Maybe I'd choose to remove Esau when possibly Nefertiti. At least Esau, because that's another guy without votes. I don't know, Nefertiti? Does she get votes? Anyways, I, I'd I put on myself as like only have Hutu poetry without the boats. I'd go that way, and that means having Etrius, Ariki, Aleandro, and Ushugli as yeah. the uh, the store guys. And it depends on how much you go for presence or how much you go for dominate. Uh, Sutik could be an option. I think the uh, what you're actually choosing between is presence and Auspex, isn't it? With this group. Yes. Uh, I say might that be true. Yeah. presence is more sh more well better, more strong, <laughs> stronger than uh, Auspex. Since Auspex is just like two eyes of Argus, and that's nice, uh, but I think you can manage without that. Uh, but the presence gives you some really nice options. Randy here chose to include force of personality, which is a personal touch. But entrancement is always good, and intimidation is a really good card as well. So I yeah. I prefer the presence. Vampire over the Auspex vampires in this script, actually. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that, I mean, another big thing is also if you choose to play Govern over Intimidation, because if you play Govern over Intimidation, ASO and Nefertiti are basically the vampires you can play Superior Govern uh, and Hutsukopokli, the, the vampires you can play Superior Govern at. So I mean, it's it's an alteration. I, I don't know. I would I would I just think Govern would be I think a waste, kind of in this deck. Uh, but that's just me. It depends on what your plan is. If your plan is to always bring the 11 caps up first and then go who support the second, you can actually uh, gain a round or two of transfers by playing uh, uh, government. But that depends on what your, what your general plan is. Yeah. It's well, lower. Well, uh, if you include more intimidation, you can include more mind rips as well. If yeah. you have governs instead of intimidations, I would say that you need to change mind rape to governs as well, since you yes. might be able to afford it. Yeah. So yeah. intimidation allows you to play mind rape, and mind rape is really good. <laughs> it Which is. Which is how it is. is. Um, okay, so just basically short sentences. How do you play it and win? <laughs> you, play, you start by playing Silas Valley, Information Highway, bringing out a huge cap vampire turn two, and then you start by bleeding for six to eight each turn. And then you pick uh, it. And uh, you want to do the villain before you start bleeding for more than three uh, as a, a rule of thumb in a tournament. Yeah. So you don't end up getting Arc Investigation without having the villain off think. most of the blood. Because you will lose turns by Arc Investigation in that case, but you will at least have the pool to get another vampire into play. Yes. So. You could still recruit it from that, but having like 11 blood, Rika bleed for 8 and getting burned first turn is game over. Yes. Um, game Adam, would you say would you say that this is a difficult deck to play? Given uh, uh, let's see, given uh, right uh, opposition, it's not that hard since you don't need to adapt your play. But if you choose, if you uh, or face and you get into the choice uh, situations where you need to make difficult choices, it's really hard to make the right choices, I think. It's like the one mind rape, the one banishment, you have one ugly shell fury, which is like uh, a rush for defense, uh, and, Jake. and as Randy, yeah, Jake is also good, and as Randy said, normally you'll have to uh, get by on one round of Azure tablets. And that's kind of limited resources. You're not allowed to make much mistakes, and there are some things that are really hard to deal with, uh, most notably heavy bleed. Uh, so if you get into a situ situation where you need to make these tough choices, uh, it's like the really little things that make you win. You need to think of 
so many different things to make the right uh, choice with uh, like the one uh, Azure tablets uh, around or the one mind rape. Yeah. Uh, so <coughs> to, to uh, uh, like play this passively, you don't need to be really skilled, but you can increase the skill level or the skill cap on this deck uh, a lot by uh, trying to deal with the uh, superficially impossible situations, but that you actually have some tools for dealing with. Yeah, so I think that that's a good point also for knowing the deck, because of it's kind of straightforward, but, but you have so many choices if you really think about it. And if you know the deck, you have been in a lot of situations where you can, yeah, I have this card, this might work, but it's kind of long shot, and you can have that yeah. like in the back of your head when you come to a tournament. That's that's great. If you also, if you want yeah, to also Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'll I'll just, yeah, and just fast comment also do, don't ever count yourself out because you can I mean having one minion still can give you a game win yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing that m at first glance maybe doesn't seem like that big of a thing but is if you have played the liquidation version and as we haven't talked about yet, but now I'm going to drop it. There's no range of power, there's no ancient influence, there's no uh, uh, political stranglehold. So there's a very few of the big cap pool game cards in the deck. Uh, so I think you will have less recruiting power than you usually have in these kinds of decks. It's, in that case, it's even more straightforward than these decks usually are when you are straightforwarding but with these additional cards that I dropped now, you get some more options. Yeah. Having, uh, can you have the ability to take build up turns, playing Rains of Power, Prisca Stranglehold, Ancient Influence. Rains of Power more often is a heavy pool damage card than it's a build up card, but it depends on your the capacity of your Predators and Vampires, for obvious reasons. Yeah, okay. So, uh, what kind of. Uh, do we have any last summarizing of this deck, anyone? Well, it's kind of hard to play, but it's really a good way of uh, learning about uh, high cap, playing high cap cards, high cap vampires. Uh, because high cap vampires, it's kind of unique. You uh, need to deal with situations in a really specific and kind of weird way compared to a mid cap or a more reaction based uh, kind of deck. or. Uh, so it's kind of it's really interesting to play this kind of deck, and it's not as straightforward as you might think. Just looking at the deck list. Uh, yeah, and even more so than other decks, you you can't take like a weird action for some weird stuff, like go get power base Montreal or some stuff like that. You don't that action yields too little to be uh, worth doing. So you need to no. calculate every action. Don't hunt, for instance. <laughs> For instance, so uh, al also when you look at the deck list, and I, I haven't experienced it, but when I look at the deck list, I would say there's a little too few crypt acceleration cards. What yeah. are there? Uh, Six cylinders, yeah, and two. Ten to seventy-two. That's I think that feels ab about right. It's about right, but you might yeah. get like. I'm Say one game in five, one game in four, you're not gonna draw any crypt exploration. Yeah. Is that Sounds about right. Yeah, and if that's the finals, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whoops! Cr cry deeply. <laughs> <laughs> like a mouse. So, uh, yeah, Isaac, do you have any comparisons with this deck with the other similar decks? Yeah, the most obvious one, which we just touched on, is the one with the girls. Did you just touch girls? Uh, yes, I did. Shut up, Anders. <laughs> The Powerpuff Girls. Yeah. Oh my um, god. <laughs> and that deck, uh, the biggest difference is that, to keep it uh, like one sentence uh, difference, is that you, in girls, get a worse crypt, but a better library. And why is that? And why is that? <laughs> because you don't have to, you move your bounce from your library to your crypt, yeah. because you have Axinia, but that means that you need to put Axinia into play, and she doesn't give any extra monster face actions, she's 
She's okay bleed wise because she's got superior presence, but she's not that strong when it comes to stealthing. She got she doesn't doesn't got any votes. Um, so she needs to be untapped to yeah. use her bones. Yeah, and and that part. So most of the time you don't even act with her. You have the guard dogs and rats warning, obviously, but that's like the the basic idea of of, of differences. But leaning to one. Did you, did you ever think about going girls instead of geezers, Randall? Uh, uh, no, not this time, because uh, I basically was more comfortable with this deck. Yeah. Well, it makes and a lot I of sense. If, oh, go ahead. No, it no I, I was about to say, and with girls I cannot play Mind Rape Conditioning. <laughs> so, yeah. the girls deck has more, more cheaper more space actions, and it has the liquidations, and it has four bounds, but it doesn't have dominate, so it's kind of even more extremely uh, aligned towards getting more minions, mm. but the minions will be worse uh, than as we talked about earlier in this part, uh, how the Jesus Randall played is uh, really optimized for uh, uh, like a low pool damage meta, yeah. and just bleeding for lots, so with that reasoning, the girls deck would have been a really bad choice. Do you not have any not others? Not really bad. No, not <laughs> worse. Okay, it's, it's still going to be a good choice. Yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, yeah, a so worse choice. Uh, so, Adam, do you have any other uh, decks that you would like to compare it, do a comparison with? The it has a spiritual predecessor in uh, Council of Power Bleed. Council. Council of Power Bleed, which is uh, like the same crypt. Uh, but uh, it it predates Azure Tablets, and without Azure Tablets, you're not going to play Liquidation. It's just like a minion tap, power bead kind of deck. That's that was like played in 2003 or something. I don't know. It's, it predates my Beatus career at least. Uh, but it has spiritual predecessor there. But I think it's just plain worse. <laughs> right now, Azure Tablets is a really good card. You're gonna play with it and. Uh, the name we have for it is Jesus will find your blind spot. So, <laughs> as a spiritual predecessor in that the deck, but it's not the script in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, and some and some people I've heard uh, compare uh, Jesus, geezers with uh, uh, Council of Doom, but I don't. I think that comparison is wrong, actually, because you. That's a very defensive deck. Basically, it's the same crit, but you have Moist Shrek uh, doing defensive stuff with her blood, and you rely on some parry shifting, I think. Uh, yeah. And and you don't play defensively at all with this deck. You bring up guy, guy bleeds, bring up new guy, new guy bleeds, and you just do that. <laughs> um, well, but there are some points where you yeah see similarities like. Some some of the same guys, uh, but you play more controlling the table, uh, sniping VPs, and not keeping high pressure all through the game. So there's some differences that are very important. There are also some similarities, of course, which yeah. are important. Well, I, I agree with you fully. I think they're really not that similar in, in in the way you play it, and that's I mean. I think it's easier to compare that to girls if you. Uh, yeah. Replace Exinia with Morris, and then Cybele with Hotzi, and then the circles for the circles. Yeah. It's more yeah. of a, a light, uh, similar, yeah. Yeah, more similar. Yeah. Similar. yeah. Uh, Randall, do you have any other decks that you come to mind? Yes, actually, I think that there's uh, there's girls without Akisinia where you can utilize Warspex as a form of. Uh, Deflect with uh, you play Sybil, Nurgle, Raphael the Corazon, maybe uh, Lucian the Perfect, yeah. bleeding hard, waking, deflecting with war specs. You can use Mental Maze instead. It's a little blood heavier, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any comments? No, I agree. Uh, I agree. <laughs> it's also a fun deck, but that's for another show. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. Um, hmm. Do we have anything more to add then? The word is yeah. free. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to add to reach out some some thanks to uh, 
Petri Westman for organizing Ropicon and to our host, uh, Marco, hosts Marco and Nina and all the other Finns, uh, Janne and stuff, which makes the event awesome. I can recommend yes. everyone to go to Finland, go to Ropicon. Yeah. It's a really good tournament and everyone's really friendly. It's one of the best there is. And it's a really, it's a huge convention as well. So if you enjo enjoy the, like the convention stuff, like cosplaying, board games, I don't know, Sour sausage. <laughs> the Finnish people, the Finnish people are really big at cosplaying. So you see a, raw, a lot of neat uh, costumes and stuff. So it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, um, I think that's about uh, the time we have for uh, this show. Uh, this season is going to be great. Uh, come join us next time. Don't forget to check out Randy's and other guys' blogs. Uh, it's uh, stockholmjahad.blog.se. Uh, uh, there you can read uh, the entire tournament report of Randy and check out uh, a lot of cool ideas and thoughts about Vitas. So, okay, that's it for this time. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And remember, if you have any thoughts, comments, or ideas, you can post them on our Facebook page or send an email to the address below, which is causeandpresenteffect at gmail.com. After the show, we will post a thread on weekend.net where you can continue the discussion. Adam shows us a war goal, and that's our sign for signing out. So we'll see you next week, and have a good one. And thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.